we turn to describe the proposed single image super resolution algorithm with all its details. Our prior is based on the sparseNet model imposed on patches. PKH is the kth patch from the high resolution image, and it is believed to have a sparse representation alpha k with respect to the dictionary DH. Now let's try to describe the connection between these two corresponding patches, PKH and its low resolution version PKL. Globally, the relation between YH and YL is given by this equation. Observe the appearance of Q that magnified the image back to the destination size. This relation suggests a similar connection on the patches, which says that if we take the high resolution patch and apply a linear operator L on it, we should get close to its matched low resolution patch. L will include in it the effects of the blur, the decimation, and the interpolation. By the way, for this expression to make perfect sense, the size of the high-res patch should be bigger than the low-res one so as to account for the spatial operations involved. We have just seen this connection. When merged with the prior on the high-res patch PKH, we get this relation. We see here a linear operation on the very same sparse representation alpha k producing something that is epsilon away from the low resolution patch. This matrix is our low resolution dictionary DL, and the key observation to make here is that the very same representation serves both resolution patches. How should we train DL and DH? We should gather sets of high and low resolution images. This is easily done. Just choose a set of training images and create low res versions of them. Interpolate back to get pairs of YH and YL, and these will be fed to the training. How? By extracting all the pairs of patches from them. Another option that in some cases makes sense is to bootstrap the image we are given. We have the image ZL that should be magnified. We use this image itself to create a high and low resolution pair by simulating the degradation on it. This gives us a pair of images to train on. This approach is sensible in cases when the image content is believed to be scale invariant, thus enabling us to create a pair of dictionaries that are specifically tailored to the image we are supposed to improve. Let's talk about the patches we feed to the training process. Given the high and low resolution images, we could train DH on the high resolution patches directly, but this was found to be not so effective. A better approach is to compute this difference and extract the patches from this image, giving us the set of high-res information to learn. In this approach, we are essentially saying, let's learn the process of computing the high frequencies of YH, since the low ones are already known to us. In the same spirit, when we are to train DL, we could use the patches taken from YL directly, however, there is a better alternative. We can take this image and apply a set of filters on it, essentially extracting local derivative features. Then, we should extract patches from these images and pile them to serve as our low-res signals. Since the dimension of the resulting signal is too big and wasteful, we can reduce its dimensionality by plain PSEA. In this case, this ended up with vectors of length 30, and these are the low-resolution patch features to train DL on. In the proposed algorithm, the training process itself starts with DL. We simply use the KSVD to train a dictionary of size 30 by 1000. By the way, here and everywhere in this work, the parameters we report were obtained by empirical testing and optimization of the overall process. Given this dictionary, every low resolution feature vector from the image YL undergoes a sparse coding stage and we get the sparse representation alpha k. We just performed the sparse coding and got all the representations for all the patches, and we should proceed by multiplying these representations by the age in order to get as close as possible to the high resolution patches. Thus, all that this implies is that we should solve this least squares problem and get the age. This is the least squares we have just defined, and in fact, this is not the best we could do. Remember that once the recovered patches are given to us, we aggregate them together to form the final image. Thus, a better approach would be to optimize the age such that the final image after patch averaging is closest to the desired 
image yh. Notice that in this expression, we take into account the fact that the patch averaging generates the high frequency content, so we augment it with yl. This is still a least squares task, yet a more challenging one. 